what is God's normal pattern of communication? Is this normal? Is this, is this what I should want? Is this what I should seek? Is this what God offers? See, these are honest questions that we need to talk about because what happens is we just, we just kind of don't say anything and we watch people and they come up to us. Have you ever had anybody come up to you and say, the Lord told me to tell you this? And, and they just look you right in the eye and say, God told me to tell you to do this or not to do this. And I have to, I mean, it, it's, you know, it's a little uncomfortable. You smile, you listen to them, and then you say, but God hasn't told me that. And there are no more prophets and apostles that speak on the level of the Word of God. And so I appreciate your concern. But God, God said, if a prophet comes to you, check. Did you know when Paul preached Acts 17.11, the entire church in Berea took notes and went home and checked the Bible to see if it was accurate. When Paul, the apostle that wrote half the New Testament, when he was just preaching, they checked everything he said against the Bible. Now think about that. There are some today who claim angelic visits. There are some today in Christendom who claim visions, who claim God's voice speaking aloud to them, and supernatural messages are delivered to them that they feel need to be proclaimed to others as directions directly from God. So a perfectly timed question at Christmas is, does God picture that his guiding dreams, his visions, his angel visits, his superly, supernaturally guided shepherd and wise men visits, does God say this is supposed to continue? Is this operative today? Well, the answer is no. The, this type of direct revelation is part of a pattern that you will see if you study the Word of God. That, and by the way, if, if I would have had, if this was a longer, kind of like a classroom setting, I would have shown you that each time the angel came, it was to fulfill the Word of the Lord. Each time the angel spoke and there was some, if you notice, if you keep reading around the text, it says to fulfill what the Lord had already promised in his Word, in Isaiah, and this, and this, and this. God was supernaturally getting people to fulfill what he'd already written in his written word. And that correspondence shows that the normal pattern of God, as we'll see in a moment, is his written word. Well, notice what I said. There were no recorded angel dreams and visits for any of these people. Now, some of you might say, wait a minute. Uh, how do we know that there are no more angel visits to Simeon or Joseph or Mary or anything else? Because I said no more recorded. The scriptures were supernaturally engineered by God. He sees the end from the beginning. He knows every event going on. He knows every thought, every word, every intention. He even knows what we could do and don't and what we would have done if something would have changed. He knows every potential outcome plus the one that he has ordained. But what's written in this book is what he wants us to know. What for? For doctrine, what's right. For reproof, what isn't right. For correction, how we are to get right. And for instruction in righteousness, how we stay right. God wrote down what he wants and left out what he doesn't want us to know. See, that... The Bible was supernaturally engineered. It wasn't just a collection of people who says, hey, let's write a bestseller, and you know, we'll live off of it you know, on the Riviera or something. God orchestrated every word that's in this book. God inspired the scriptures. God said the scriptures were all that we needed for doctrine and correction and instruction, and for us to be completely equipped to serve him through life. Then the recorded history with no more recorded angel visits and dreams and voices is what God wants us to learn. God's word gives us the frame. The facts God gives us frames how we're to look at life. 
God burst into the scene, led those in those ten events, and then there are no more. That's what he wants us to know. There are no more events that matter for our understanding of how he deals with us. You know, most people like the white spaces, what isn't written down, and they just love to speculate. God says, what I've written was written for your understanding that you through the patience and understanding of Scripture might know how you're to live. God wrote down our doctrine. God has given us our framework. God has set the pattern that we're to follow for everyday life. God shows us that in all of divinely recorded history, by the way, that's what, the, this Bible is divinely recorded history. Is it everything that happened? No. Is it everything that God says is important to know to understand what's going on? Yes. Do we need anything else to understand God's plan, his purposes, his direction, his desire for us. No. There's nothing missing. There's no more coming. This is it. We already know the ending. It's just people don't like it. It's kind of like uh, Mark Twain, the sage, American unbelieving sage, who said, it's not the parts of the Bible that I don't understand that bother me. It's the parts I do. Those bother me. See, what we should do is not worry about what we don't know. We should concentrate on what God has revealed to us. And in a clear and a very powerful way, God has jumped in in special periods of time, but he stops and then redirects people to the norm. And the norm is what he's already stated and written down in his word.